Well, good evening, children, and welcome back to the Story Hut. And just like that, it's Friday, and a whole other week gone. And we've been watching the children uh, leaving school today, and we've seen ever so many go by, some in their cars, and some walking with mums and dads and nanas. And I think David and I probably only know the names of one or two or three children at the Gwynedd these days. But it's good to know that God knows all our names, isn't he? He cares about each one of us. And we were talking yesterday about how there are quite a lot of people in the Bible and we don't know their names. It's not because they didn't have a name, it's just that their names are not recorded. And uh, we heard about some of the soldiers yesterday, didn't we? Do you remember how um, David... Well, he was in a bit of a tight spot, wasn't he? He promised to support Achish in battle, but then Achish went to battle against the people of God and God came to uh, David's rescue and he didn't have to go into battle. And do you remember they made the long march back to Ziklag? But when they got there, all their families were gone. That would be the mums, the young people, all the teens, the children, the old people all gone and they were very very sad and Abiathar if you remember the priest said to David well God says you must go into battle you must go after the raiders so here's Ziklag the fortress city that was given to David by Achish and all these people are gone so I wonder what happens next so there's a whole group of people when they got to the brook of Bezor who were too tired to carry on. And David said to them, will you stay here and look after everyone's baggage while the rest of us go on to do battle? And we said sometimes um, that God asks us to do something that's not very glamorous, but it's still God's work. So 200 of his men stayed behind and the rest splashed across the brook and marched eagerly on. As David and his now 400 men, so we've only got 400 men, marched on, they came upon a boy. And he was lying huddled by the roadside. He was a boy. Is he dead? said one of the men. Mm, maybe he's just faint, said the other one. Let's have a look. And so they went over to the boy and they carried him over to David. David has a look at him. Hmm. David decided to give him some food and water and in no time the boy began to sit up. And he looked a little bit more lively now. I feel better now, he told them. I'd had nothing to eat for three whole days. Ooh, no wonder he was feeling faint. Where are you from? David asked him gently. I'm an Egyptian. Would well, you remember all those stories we had when the Israelites were in Egypt a long time ago? I'm an Egyptian, the boy answered, but I'm a slave. I'm a slave of an Amalekite. And the Amalekites were another set of people who were in opposition to God and God's people. My master took me with him when they raided Ziklag. <gasps> Ziklag, that's their fortress town, isn't it? My master took me with him when they raided Ziklag, but on the way back, I became poorly and he left me here. That's a very cruel master, isn't it? Well, the whole thing's cruel, isn't it? David pricked up his ears. This boy might have just the information they needed. Can you show us where the raiders will be, he asked. I'll gladly take you to them, he promised. If you promise me never to hand me back to my master. And he gave a frightened shiver. Oh, he wouldn't want to be with him again, would he? And they set off cheerfully again, following the boy's lead. So there's an army of men following a young boy. Isn't that wonderful? Their kindness to him, to him had brought a surprising reward. At last they came upon the Amalekite raiders, spread out and sprawled on the open ground, eating and drinking. They were so sure that David was far away, they hadn't even bothered to set up a guard. Quietly, David watched and waited. When dawn came and the Amalekites were sleeping off their feast, he and his men attacked the camp. They rescued everyone and 
everything that the Amalekites had stolen and lots more besides. How thankful were all the wives and the children to see their husbands and all, all the dads who'd come to take them home. And they all set off on the road back to Ziklag. So I'd better get them, haven't I? So they're all going to go back on the road back to Ziklag. This poor chap's got his head on the wrong way round. Here they all are. They've all been rescued. It was many more than this. I've just got a few figures. When they reached the Bezor Brook again, oh, can you remember who's there? That's right, it, it's the 200 men looking after all the baggage. They found their companions waiting for them. Well, we'll give them back their wives and children, but we won't give them any of the good things we've won, some of David's men whispered. No, said David, we will share everything with them, David insisted. God has given us this victory. All we have comes from him. And besides, those who look after the baggage deserve their share, just as much as those who go to fight. Everyone was happy now, and David felt light-hearted too. Perhaps his troubles would soon be coming to an end. Oh, so you have to come back next week to see how things go for David. But that's a lovely story, isn't it? It's a little boy le leading them into battle. They manage to rescue everyone. And then when they get back, some of them are thinking that they're the ones that have won the battle and they're forgetting it's God's victory. And the celebration and the joy are to be shared equally amongst all. We've got some lovely old people in our church, haven't we? who can't do so very much now as they used to. They used to work very, very physically hard in the church, but now perhaps they're a bit too old. But you know, something they do for us is they pray. And they really do pray for us, which is wonderful. Um, sometimes we can't do all the big stuff, the exciting stuff, but we can always pray. We can always keep watch. We can always keep God. So um, it's a lovely story that reminds us of the victory that God has in our lives through Jesus. So thank you for listening. Come back next week. I hope you have a lovely weekend. And we're just going to pray now. So we're going to put our hands together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this story. Thank you for reminding us, Lord, that it's you that has the victory in our lives. It's Jesus who won the victory over sin and death on the cross. Help us, Lord, not to get above ourselves, but always to be thankful for everything that you do in our lives. Watch over each one of us, we pray, and all our friends and family this weekend. Help us to trust in you. Amen. And we're just going to do the blessing. Le, le. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you safe. The Lord give you his peace till we meet again. Amen. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a lovely weekend. Bye.